my name is Joe Pace III. We will be with you for the next 25 minutes, and we thank you for tuning in. Well, I'm going to start off by saying we had a fundraiser on last week, and um, it turned out to be pretty good. We didn't get the turnout that we needed, and some of you who had promised to be there, who had told us that you would definitely be in attendance, didn't show. And if you're listening right now you know, and, or, or viewing this program, you know exactly who you are. But anyway, uh, we're so grateful for those people who did show up. And uh, to that extent, and we had the degree of success that we had with it. We had a ball out there in the harbor. The music was just absolutely fantastic, being provided by Mr. George Newtall, who incidentally is the pianist for the Gibson Steakhouse. And also, uh, we had a wonderful time eating uh, all kinds of delicious food and sipping on wine and just enjoying that fresh air out on the harbor. And I mean, everybody really enjoyed it. So we had a great time. We could have had a few more people and therefore it would have been a bit more successful because we had a goal we wanted to reach. Didn't reach it, but we're grateful for what we did do. Now I want to um, talk about, um, last week we talked about um, Charlottesville, Virginia and what, what was happening uh, there with uh, Donald Trump and uh, and his uh, comments on um, uh, the uh, what we call uh, what what they call themselves uh, white supremacists or something of that type. We wanted to uh, we talked about that a little bit and we're so happy that we don't have to talk about that this week. Uh, we did talk at length about it to let you. And know how we felt about it and felt about the, the, how the president was seemed to be uh, sugarcoating it and we thought this was dead wrong and, uh, and in fact most Americans I believe feel the same thing white black brown or yellow now this week we have the situation and news out of Texas with uh, Hurricane Harvey I believe it is and um, we want to just say that for those people who are in Texas, that we really are hoping and praying for you and your safety and the safety of your families. So uh, stay in there, hang in there as much as you can if anybody is listening. If you have relatives in Texas, we hope that uh, somehow they are safe and uh, we will be, of course, uh, praying. Uh, that everybody will be okay in Texas. And of course, uh, this thing is moving, the rain is moving toward uh, Louisiana. So we're really hoping that people will be fine in Louisiana. And so this is something that uh, is going on in the country and all Americans um, share in this uh, fiasco, this terrible situation that's going on. Uh, and nobody wants to go through that. People are losing uh, not only their lives, but their uh, personal belongings. Uh, some of them have been in their homes for years. Some of them, their um, parents and grandparents and even great-grandparents were in these homes and, 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 and uh, lived in these communities uh, for generations. So we, our hearts go out to all of those people, and I hope that everybody who's listening uh, you are praying and your heart go out also. And now, I want to just say that um, as we get ready to go into talking about our art and uh, our music training and some of the things that we are doing at the Coltrane Surgery of the Arts, I just, before we do that, I want to point out some things that are going on as we are going through this this crisis in America uh, with uh, Hurricane Harvey, and uh, all of us are going through it in some way or, uh, or another, but um, certainly not like those individuals who are down there in the midst of this storm. <coughs> now, on yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, or the uh, Kim Jong Un launched a missile over Japan. Can you believe that? 
a country that experienced not one, but two atomic bombings. And in some cases, from what I understand, these areas that these bombs were dropped in, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, in certain parts of these areas, you still can't, it's not safe to live in them because the atomic radiation is still still active. But Kim Jong-un decided to launch a missile over that country. And sirens went off, and the people were traumatized. You know. And no doubt some people that were alive back during the time when they dropped that first bomb, because they dropped that bomb, if I'm not mistaken, in 46 or 47. So there would be people who would still be alive and remember how horrifying that was. But even the generation, the millennials in Japan, and those people that are born after they dropped those two bombs must have been totally and completely shocked out of their minds. Here we are in 2017, folks, and people are doing things as though we are in the, the, the Stone Ages or some far off place that believes in nothing but war and has no understanding that war is horrible. Oh yes it is. And and not only that, but it's it's inhumane. It's inhumane for human beings to slaughter each other in this manner. You know, we have to figure out a way as the highest form of life on this earth to resolve our differences without killing each other. This isn't is rocket science. But that's what we're still doing here in 2000, in the, 20, in the 21st century. Now, we gotta get rid of these atomic bombs, okay? Hold on, those of you who want to hear about what we're doing over at the conservatory with our music and our tutoring, we're going to get to that. But hold on for a second while we talk about this because it's so important to get rid of these nuclear weapons before somebody goes off, goes berserk, goes mad, and launches one of them. And people understand that it only takes somebody who's gotten up all on the wrong side of the bed to order somebody to do something crazy. And by that I mean somebody who's mad and upset, you know what I mean. And the next thing you know, he's ordered some general or somebody to, to get these things ready to launch. Now... How can we contain Kim Jong-un and anybody else who's got nuclear weapons and, and, and starts to saber rattle and, and make threats? The first thing we have to do is to propose to the, to the United Nations the abolition of nuclear weapons. That's the only way this is going to be resolved. This country, from what I understand, has more than 7,000 nuclear weapons in all shapes and sizes. And they are pointed at, at, at some nations that we'd probably be shocked if we knew that we had nuclear weapons aimed at these countries, we would probably be shocked. And some of them probably think they're our friends. But they're appointed at nations all over the world. And this is, this is for us to say to other countries, look, no nuclear weapons, no research, okay? 
All right. You got to be nice. All right. No nuclear weapons. That's naive. That's the most naive thing that I could think of. People are not insane. They know as long as they don't have these things to, to fight back with, they're going to be bullet. They're going to be bullet, you know. And so the only thing that uh, what we need to do in this country is start is just say, look, we're going to get rid of all of the nuclear weapons. We'll get rid of ours first. Then we'll ask the Russians to get rid of theirs. Then the Indians. Then the Chinese. And all the rest of them. Let's get rid of these things before we destroy this earth because the people on this earth aren't trustworthy. To, to handle nuclear weapons. So this is ridiculous. And I wanted to say that, and I'm done with it, but I, I needed to say that, because that's the only way we're going to ever get rid of them. And if people all over the globe stand up and demand that these things be abolished, what can the politicians do but do it? What can the generals do but do it? That's, not, that's the only resolution. The only resolution. The only resolution. So, and it should start with this country who has more than anyone, even the Russians. It should start right here in this country. And it should start with this country because we're the only country that's ever used one. Not one, but two. We're the only country in the world that's ever launched one of those things. And we have the gall to look down our noses trying to pretend as though we are so sanctified. Come on, man. Let's get with it, Mr. Trump and, and all the rest of you politicians. Okay, let's talk about the Jazz Fest that's going to be happening coming up on Thursday, tomorrow, starting tomorrow, and it'll end on Sunday, just before Labor Day, just before people get a break from whatever they're doing and get ready to go back to work. And they got some extraordinary players down there. There's, uh, there's going to be uh, George Freeman, George stopped by our facility uh, just about uh, when we first opened up, about maybe three years ago, four years ago, he stopped by and just to congratulate us on it and commend us on opening up something that's going, that was for all the people in our community. Uh, now George is uh, having, uh, not only is he going to be there, he just did a George Freeman, I hope that George Freeman is who I'm talking about. George Freeman is making his 90th birthday, and he's going to celebrate that uh, as he is playing down at the festival on tomorrow. His, um, he comes up. He's going to be in concert. I believe it's 730 he comes up. And each of these uh, performances runs about an uh, hour and a half. So you might want to come down there. He has a brand new CD out. He's playing at a very high level. He's the brother of Vaughn Freeman, the very fam famous tenor saxophone man who died a couple of years ago. But George P Freeman played with uh, Charlie Parker. And these are living legends, people. You want to get out and see these people. These are people who uh, helped to make this, uh, this, 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 this music that black people have given to the world. Uh, to pine to shape it and form it and get it get it to where it is on today. So we want to wish George uh, Freeman, George, if you're out there, happy birthday to you and have a great concert tomorrow. I have students all the way up to 7:30. I'm probably going to be too late getting out there in order to come down and see you. But you always, uh, you know, that welcome to come by our facility at 6353 South. Uh, and it's, it's an honor, in fact, to have you when you when you dropped in uh, earlier this uh, when we first uh, uh, started up back a few years ago. It was an honor then, and it would be an honor to have you uh, with us if you so desire. Are uh, you in that area? Please do stop by. Now, I want to just talk to you a moment or two about our programming. First thing about it, I know a lot of you out there have musical interests desires to be able to play an instrument, but something has been holding you back for years, and it's still holding you back, 
and it will be holding you back until you stop it from holding you back. Well, we're at, we're at Cold Fang Surgery or the Arts. You can come out uh, to our facility, 6353 South Cottage Grove Avenue, right across the street from the Social Security Office, right next to the historical Grand Ballroom. We teach and train on all the instruments, all the band instruments, saxophone, trumpet, guitar, drums, piano, baritone horn, bass, uh, guitar. We teach all of those instruments, and all you have to do is come out, give us a call, and you may call us uh, right now here at this station, or you may get in contact with us over at our facility, which is 773-891-1875. That's 773-891-1875. We'd be happy to give you all the information that you need on these programs that we have. Okay, and some of you, like I said, uh, have been trying to, been thinking about dusting off that piano or that saxophone or that clarinet for a long time. And yet, and many of you have children, and you know that it's going to help them develop if, in fact, you get them involved with something. This is good for them. This is going to help them to grow up and, be, and it builds disciplines in people's lives when they have something to study, something that they love to do, you know? So what you want to do is you want to, you want to um, uh, call us up. You can call this number if you want to right now. 312, you sit on, your, on the uh, monitor there on the screen, 738-1060. That's again, 312-738-1060. You can call right now. You don't need to wait. Get up and, get up and make a phone call. You, you know, make a phone call right now and get some information about these things, you know. Because they're there for you in your own community. This is not on the north side. This is not on out in Wheaton or Downers Grove. So this is on the south side of Chicago. In fact, right smack dab in the middle of the south side of Chicago. 6353 South Cottage Grove. And we have a nice facility facility out there. You, it's very safe. You walk in and whatnot. We have instructors for all the instruments. I'm an instructor myself as well as the director. And then, of course, um, I want you to um, be mindful of some other things that we do there. You may be able to see on there. If you can see this, uh, if you can read that, you can see that we also tutor in math and English, okay? So we're, we're there for the community, all right? Whether you take advantage of it or not, we are there. And whether your children can read or write or know anything about mathematics or not, you are the one who will have to be responsible for that because there's help on the way if you're willing to accept it, you know? But if you're just sitting around and expecting it, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something, too many of us... Um, nonchalant about these things. Too many of us are not um, willing to, to, to do what we have to do in order to make a difference. And when things don't work out, um, we then um, are disappointed. So what I did this, I did that. And many, many times when we say that, I did this for my child, I did this for my grandchild. We're talking about I bought them all this ice cream. I bought them all these expensive gym shoes. I bought these expensive jeans. I even bought them the best looking bicycles and gave them chocolate cake and coconut cake and donuts and all of this stuff. I did everything for this child that he could have ever wanted. Well, guess what? Those are not things of value. Those are just what, what they are called, things. Yeah, well, I mean, we have to get valuable things and whatnot to our children. Sit down and talk to them at length and hold conversations, find out what's on their minds and hearts, spend quality time with them, take them out to museums and what, uh, nice restaurants and parks and whatnot and really get involved with them in their lives and whatnot. This go get yourself a, a slice of chocolate cake, you'll be okay. Well, the kid is going to go and grab a slice of chocolate cake, but, and he's gonna be okay because he's really 
feeding his frustrations with all that sugar and stuff. And so that's going to make him feel better. But in the long run, it's going to be so terrible for uh, this little fellow, as well as, uh, uh, you know, the little uh, girls. So please do something for your own children and your own grandchildren. And quit complaining about anything. And also, the little something that people have to spend out of their pocket, spend it. You know, I mean, come on, you know, if you, 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 these children have to be raised. And they can't be raised by themselves, you know, they can't raise themselves. They have to be raised, and, and we raise them by providing them with uh, good, solid training and good, solid extracurriculum activities letting them have the opportunity to learn how to play an instrument, showing them that I really love you, you know, I really care about you and I want to do something for you. I'm going to make a sacrifice for you. You know, I'm going to do this for you, especially for you because you want to do it. And not only that, but, but when it comes down to our tutoring programs, you got to understand that uh, most, of our, most of the children that come to our facility who are in so-called magnet schools are deficient in mathematics and in many cases in English. And these are supposed to be the best schools that the public school system has to offer. These students are deficient. And when I say deficient, I'm being kind. They are way behind, okay? And so, and we, and, and, uh, and, and I'm not just making this up. I'm not just making this up. And when you begin to understand how these things are going to impact these young people's lives down the road, it's traumatic, you know. You, everything is becoming more competitive. Everything, you know, to get a real good job, pe they, people may, some company or some organization might interview a hundred people just for that one position. And, and, and you really got to be sharp. You got to be sharp in today's society. And it's just going to get more and more like that as time goes by. So I want to thank you all for uh, tuning in on today. I'm very uh, happy that you decided to stop by and spend a little time with us. We show up here every, uh, what, uh, week on Wednesday at 7.30. And um, we have some things, sometimes we talk about some social things most time, whatever's in the news, we have a few minutes on that, and we talk about our music programming as well as our tutoring. So I'd like for you to call us up. Once again, we're at 773-891-1875. And uh, if you don't get an answer, I want you to leave your name and phone number, and we'll call you back, and I'm going to ask you to be sure to answer the phone if you see our number come up on your, on your uh, screen or whatever, because we don't have a lot of time to be on the phone uh, trying to uh, reach people. So give us a call once again, 773-891-1875, and we look forward to seeing you on next week.